When I first heard that that title, Old School, I never liked it because I knew it wasn't something that somebody was saying, you know, it, it wasn't a cool title. It was a title to say that we were old. So I never accepted it until it started to separate us from the nonsense and hip hop. And it separated us to show that we, the, we were the more mature, you know, hip hoppers. So I didn't like it. I sat back and it just kept hitting my mind. And I was like, you know, they don't call the Rolling Stones old school. You know, they, they don't call, you know, um, um, Genesis old school. You know, they don't call anybody from that era old school. They just call them by their name. And I think that we should have that same respect. Call us by our name. And, you know, I just kept thinking and I started to write, they got me. And they got me, it's like, you know, they put you in a place and they held me in this place. And, you know, like most people, when they have a family and the family starts to get old and they don't want to take care of them no more and they think that they can't do for themselves, they put them in the old folk home so that they don't have to deal with it. They might pay a couple dollars to the side, but they put them in that place. And I didn't like that because... I'm not old. I mean, not too long ago, Elton John is, is, is just getting ready to release his new album. So I want our people to see the same thing. You know, when you put a, a, a time and a date on us, then you're doing the same thing to you. So if you front on me, you're fronting on your own longevity. So I wrote it and I started to say things like, they call me old school, put me in an old folk home, took away my pad and pen and destroyed my microphone. They're saying, it's nice here. They think I'm some kind of fool, they're putting me in the zone. They call it old school, but I want to run with the masses. They say, you good G, I'm good in a place like this. Is this what they to think of me as they medicating me? You know, act your age, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get to the stage. Ah, they got me, they got me, they got me. They so I kind of created it like, you know, the, um, to see the image of, of, of being in an old folk home and how they treat people in an old folk home and let hip hop know this is what you're doing to your own, you know, peers, your own legends, cats who opened the door for you, fought for you and made it easier for you to do hip hop. So they got me is dedicated to those people, have a little bit of fun with it. But the point still is, don't put us in that old school category because we're classical and it's a blessing that we're still around for you to see those elements of what we fought for and, and what we bring to the table because we don't want to take nothing from you. We only want to give something to you. But you have to remember, Michael Jackson was great. He had hits he could have retired off of, but he always brought something new because he knew fans was hungry for something different. So that's the same thing with us. If we want to keep them coming, keep them buying records, we have to keep bringing something new to them. You know, showing them that it's not just at this one thing and it's not dead with that one hit or them two hits that you had. You know, music continues to grow. People continue to look for something fresh and we should be able to give that to them so that when they do get in their 40s and 50s, they come see us. And if the young kids want to see what their parents was listening to and what they was growing up on, they come see us. Because the bottom line is, we are the legends of hip hop. But I want to talk about this new single I got coming out, y'all. It's called Ghetto Baby. And uh, people usually ask me, well, what is a ghetto baby? Well, a ghetto baby is a female soldier. That's a woman that holds you down. She keeps herself looking good. If you need it, you, can, you call her 3 o'clock in the morning. If you really down with her and she down with you, she gonna be there. That's your ghetto baby. And uh, that's a song that I did with um, a brother by the name of um, Gary Lefka with and Mike Rogers, some big heavy hitters in the industry. And they had the song already, they had the title Ghetto Baby, and they had artists come through, but they didn't like what they put on it, didn't really have that appeal. So Mike DeBarge talked about guy guys, he was like, I got this artist. He never told him who I was, he just said, I got a rap I'm gonna bring in. So I came in, they explained it to me, I heard the track, this is the first day I heard the track. I said, put the track on, so they put it on. Maybe about 60 seconds later, I said, take the track off. So I put the mic on, it was like, now? I said, like, right now. So um, they put the track back on, um, I got on the mic, and Ghetto Baby happened to be, you know, what we came up with. We did a little tweeting in between, in, in the meantime, in, in between that time, and we just kind of pushed it to where it would appeal to all masses. So that's that, you have Ghetto Baby. I'm working with Chubby Checker. Chubby Checker, I met through Michael DeBarge and Premier Entertainment, and um, it's a lot of things about Chubby Checker a lot of people don't know. And the first thing is, Chubby Checker is the first man to sell a million records. In that, he created the title Platinum. So when we say Platinum, it's because of Chubby Checker. So 
that's one aspect about him. Second, Chubby Checker is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Incredible to me. Because if you check Billboard, they'll let you know that he has sold more singles than any artist in the world. More than the Beatles, more than Michael Jackson, more than um, um, Elvis Presley. He has sold more than any of them. And he's a 60s artist. So remember, like he, Chubby Checker says to me, it is the 50th anniversary of the twist dancing apart to the beat. And what that means is before the twist, people danced together. And then when the twist came out, they danced apart, though they were together. Because they were doing their own thing yes. to the twist. So him and I are going to do a song, and, I, and I'll give you one verse of it so you get a sneak peek on um, the song that we're doing, the twist, 2011. And I say, um, I'm not trying to brag or spread Chubby's biz, but Doc is going to tell it just the way it is. James Brown, he worked, but this man, he grind. Five albums on the chart at the same time. So unheard of, a record for life. And he got his nickname from Dick Clark's wife. I wish that I could say that, but that's a wish list. People did the twist who couldn't speak English. That's Chubby Checker. Google his name. I'm still amazed he's not in the Hall of Fame. Ask Billboard. They'll give you the facts. The most single sold ever. Now twist that. So remember, y'all, this is music for all of us. So stop trying to put it in a category, because when you put it in a category, then you put a ceiling on how far we can go as a people.